Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the super keyword. I'm going to go ahead and open up my browser here to javacjava.com. Click on the pop-out menu and select Java OOP Tutorials. This is my page for the Java Object Oriented Programming Tutorials. I also have more tutorials on my main page there. I'm going to scroll down here to the super keyword. And in my super class constructors tutorial, I discussed how a subclass constructor could invoke the constructor of a super class by using the super keyword. We can use the super keyword here in conjunction with the dot operator to access and invoke members of a super class as well. Okay? So um, if you haven't watched my Superclass Constructors tutorial, you, you're going to want to watch that before uh, watching this tutorial. So I'm just going to briefly go over some of that stuff, but I'm, I'm recycling a lot of the code from that tutorial here and changing up just a few things to demonstrate using super plus the dot operator. So we're going to uh, highlight all that, control C to copy or right click copy and move the browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt down here. Uh, if you don't have that, you can right-click uh, on your desktop, select New Shortcut, type in CMD, click Next and Finished. It's really just that easy. Okay, first thing when we open up the DOS prompt, we're, gonna, we're going to type in Java C. You should see a whole bunch of stuff scroll by. If you don't, if you get an error message, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java Development Kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly. CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash, cd is short for change directory, and backslash tells it to go to the root. Then I'm going to make a directory called Java with the MD. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. And then we'll change directories to the Java folder. Now I'm going to make another directory, and I'm going to call this uh, super keyword. Change directories to the super keyword, and then I'm going to notepad super keyword top Java. Control V to paste or right click to paste, either one. All right, so let me just do a quick review of the last tutorial and the, what we've got going on here. Um, I've got my box class, and that's all the same from the last tutorial. It has the four instance variables there. It also has the uh, no argument box constructor with the call to super. And by the way, that would just be the call to the no argument constructor for the object class, just a full extra credit on that. Um, also I have this other box overloaded constructor here that takes um, three integer types and a string type and assigns those parameters to the local instance variables, whatever those values are. <laughs> Next I've got um, the return volume method here, which just multiplies the instance variables length times height times width and returns that as an integer value. Then I've got my class cardboard box and it extends box, right? So basically by putting the extends box on there, we inherit all the methods of the box class. These are methods and this is a method. I'm sorry, not methods. We ex but extends box inherits all the members part in that. I said methods, members. This, these are the members, and this is a member here too. This method is a member. Constructors are not members, so you don't inherit those. Okay. In the cardboard box class, um, I have a single variable, instance variable called color, and then I have a no argument constructor there, and then I have an overloaded cardboard box constructor as well that takes in three ints and two strings, and basically. Um, Then, uh, if this constructor is invoked, it will use the super keyword to basically execute. Well, once this statement executes, the super keyword will take the length, height, and width, uh, which is right up here as these parameters. It'll take these four parameters and it'll put them in as arguments, and then it will make a call to the super class's constructor, right, that matches that signature of int, 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 and string. So here we have the super class constructor that matches int, 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 and string. So it'll go ahead and pick that one, and then of course it'll assign all those values there. 
the last parameter we need to deal with is color, and I'll just set that um, this dot color equals color, right? And this contains nothing more than an object reference to the current object, which will basically say the dot operator will access the color instance variable up here and set that equal to the local color variable here that's a parameter variable, right? Okay, and then I added in this new function here called void display message and we're passing it, uh, we'll get, it will get a string box number variable here and it just displays basically stuff to the console using the print line method. So we got the string literal box number plus box number, right? And then another string literal space is a space and then this dot color and we can use this because color here is, is a member of, um, well, it's, it's a member of box or cardboard box, but um, we could also use the, this in different ways too anyway. But anyway, so we're going to put in the instant value of the instance variable there too, and then plus this string literal right here. And by the way, the, this dot is optional. We don't necessarily need to have that on there, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave that on there for the moment there. Okay. And then after that, I'll be adding the value returned from invoking the return volume in our super class. And here's where we can use the super keyword right here, right? So this basically by putting super and then using the dot operator, we can invoke the return value of our super class. So that's, that's another way that super can be used. That'll come up here and say, okay, we're going to run the return volume of the super class up here, right? We can directly access that and there is, there is a reason why I'm not just doing this, because we're going to go into what's called um, method overriding here very shortly. And, um, and, well, I won't talk too much about that. But anyway, just know that you can specifically call the method from a, your super class by using the super dot, right? And then right after that, we'll put another cubic string cubic or another string literal with cubic in there, and then plus that same super again, right? So we can do super plus the dot operator and directly access the value unit of measurement from its super class. Okay, let's go ahead and save this here. We'll compile it clear our screen and let's run it. Okay, so we get box number one is a brown cardboard box with a volume of 125 cubic inches. Box number two is a white cardboard box with a volume of 3,094 cubic centimeters. Okay, so in here you can see to build this big long string that we're displaying to the console there, we basically, we pass it in a parameter. We, display, we do a lot, we display a parameter amongst mixing string literals, right? We um, use the this operator to access the, uh, basically it returns the reference to the current object and then the dot operator access the value of color directly here for this object, right? More string literals and then we use the super operator, uh, the super keyword, right, sorry, plus the dot operator to invoke the return volume of the super class return volume um, method here. And then another string literal and then the super operator again to access the unit of measurement instance variable from the box object up, up here, the box class up here. Okay, so basically that works exactly like exactly like we were expecting it, but now is really is any of this necessary? I can tell you this isn't, super dot isn't, right? And this super dot isn't. And the reason why is because of course we don't need to use specify this dot color, though it already knows that color is up here because we don't have a local color variable in here, so it knows that it's pulling from the instance color up here, right? As opposed to here, you need to specify which color is color. If we leave off this dot color, right, it's going to say, okay, the, the, we're dealing with our local variable color because we have one here, and it's just going to say color equals color. That will not set this, this um, instance variable up there. You do have to use this dot in that particular case. 
So I'm going over, I'm reiterating just a lot of stuff here. Just, it's always good to go over stuff. Um, and so we can go ahead and recompile this and it will work. Um, let me make sure I save that and recompile it and rerun it. So as you can see what's going on there, we can do that there, right? But by putting in the super dot, dot there and the super dot there and then the this dot there, I'm kind of setting you up for the uh, the next tutorial on something that's called method overloading. So, and it's pretty pretty interesting. You can do some really cool stuff with that as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Just recompile it, rerun it one more time, and everything is good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this and close out of that. Leave you with just a quick final thought. So. The super keyword can be used in different ways to both access and invoke superclass members. You can also use the super keyword to invoke constructors of a superclass as well. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.